The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So I would just like to welcome everyone who's watching uh, this uh, Mass uh, through uh, the social media like YouTube. Maybe you're wondering who's this uh, person beside me. He's not my bodyguard. Okay, <laughs> he's Deacon Marcus, and uh, uh, so he's going to be here for a few weeks with us, uh, waiting for his ordination. He's supposed to be ordained on June 6 of this year, the same ordination date, but because of the COVID-19, it has been moved to August 15. And when I heard about August 15, that he will be ordained, I got, I got so envious, and I said, you know, uh, I, 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 would, I would request that the bishop would ordain me again on that same day, on August 15, because that's a very special day for me. <laughs> so pray for Deacon Marcus, okay? So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving instructions to have Silas and Timothy join him as soon as possible, they left him. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals, 
While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, We will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them, but some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his host. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has raised up a power for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Alleluia, alleluia. The Father will send you the Holy Spirit, says the Lord, to be with you forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, he said to the disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but it will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord.
before Mass, I was tempted to, to tell Deacon Marcus to preach at this Mass. And because that, uh, that happened to me when I was a newly ordained priest, I was concelebrating, I was about to concelebrate, and the priest there had an emergency. He told me, uh, Ken, Father Ken, you have to preach at this Mass, I have to go. So in five minutes, I was like really praying to God and asking for inspiration from the Holy Spirit on what to say in that homily. So uh, I'm going to do that with uh, Deacon Marcus maybe one of these days and see how God works. <laughs> anyway, in our first reading today, we saw how Paul uh, and Silas, they were, uh, they were preaching. Okay? They, they've been going to places. Uh, they, so they went to Athens, Greece. Okay? So these, a lot of uh, people there are unbelievers. And we see here how we could learn from, uh, from Paul. Paul is a master evangelist. He's very good in evangelizing. And uh, the reason why he was very good in evangelizing is that he connects with the people first. Uh, you see, if you see here in, in, in our first reading today, he didn't preach about Yahweh, God of Abraham, God of Moses, God of Jacob, God of Isaac. He, he didn't talk about that. Okay? He started telling them about, uh, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully in the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with inscription to an unknown God. Okay? And he also quoted uh, some of uh, well-known poets of, of Greece. Okay? So he was, he was connecting with these people. And after making that connection with them, then he started proclaiming about God. You know, it says here that, What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth. Okay? So you see here how he was able to do that. And, and not all received the, 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 the preaching of uh, Paul. In fact, it says here that uh, after him preaching about uh, the, the resurrection uh, about the resurrection from the dead, some scoffed, okay? And, and others said, we will hear you again about this. And then they left. But there are others who really, he says here, uh, but some of them joined him and became believers. They were evangelized because Paul was able to connect with them first. And here at St. Mary's, we're, we're, we're trying to do that, you know, as... As we celebrate the, the, the Eucharist here at the Mass, we're trying to, to connect to the, to the lost sheep. We're always looking out, you know, how are we going to connect to the lost sheep? Who are the lost sheep? These are the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, who have no religious affiliation. We're also trying to, to connect with the fallen away Catholics. Okay? We're also trying to connect to the millennials. You know, those who were born uh, from 1980 until year 2000. We're also trying to connect to, the, to those who are born uh, from year 2000 to present, uh, the, the Generation Z. Okay? That's why here at Mass, here at, at St. Mary's, we're, we're trying to find creative ways to connect with them. That's why sometimes we would show uh, a video, a short video, uh, or a picture, or whatever. Okay, that's why last Sunday I, I showed a trailer of um, the story of uh, Sister Claire Crockett, okay? Uh, and also, like, uh, uh, with, with regards to music, here at St. Mary's, we have a variety of music here. Sometimes we, we play traditional music, but also sometimes we, we play contemporary music, okay? And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we, we play the guitar, we play the organ, whatever way, because we know that it's, it's a good way to connect with people. Okay, people are attracted to that, like, to contemporary music. And I'm not downplaying traditional music. I, I love traditional music. But there's, there's, uh, there's a way for contemporary music to connect with, with, with people. So, that, so that's why we're, we're using that. And, and, and I understand maybe some of you here are, are, are not used to it. You know, you're, 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 you're very used to uh, conser conservative or traditional mass. Uh, but we need to find creative ways to reach out to the lost sheep, but at the same time, preserving the solemnity of the Mass. Okay? 
And uh, so I know maybe some of you are not used to it, but, um, but just be open. You know, this is a different way of, 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 uh, of uh, celebrating Mass here. I truly believe what is very pleasing to God as, as we celebrate the Eucharist is that we're able to reach out to the lost sheep because that's the heart of the Father, okay? He's always looking out for his lost son and lost sheep. You know, his, his heart is always there to see the prodigal son to come back. Jesus even said that, you know, uh, heaven rejoices over one sinner who repents than the, the, than the 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. So we, we always need to look out for the lost sheep. Now, uh, what, when I say looking out for the lost sheep, doesn't mean that you abandon the sheep that you have in your fold, Okay. You need to feed your, your sheep on your fold very well too, you know, through the Eucharist and through the preaching uh, of, 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 of the Word uh, in, 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 the, in the homily, okay? And another thing that is pleasing to the Lord is to be able to worship Him from the heart. Whatever instrument that you use, whether that's organ, uh, piano, or, or, or guitar, or, or a cappella, you know, uh, I, I think from the Lord, uh, with the Lord, what, what's more important is what's coming out from the heart. And it's not so much about the instrument that, what, that we play. Okay? So we're here to please God and not to please people. Uh, I, I know, uh, however we want to do this liturgy very well, it will not please people. And uh, because people have different tastes, different style, whatever, I understand that. Um, uh, but that's why uh, we just need to focus on pleasing God. And pleasing God is, are we reaching out to the lost sheep? Are we feeding the sheep who are coming here? Uh, are we feeding them well? And are we worshiping from the heart? Those are the three things that we need to focus on in this liturgy in order to please God. Amen? United as one body of worshipers in the Lord, we bring our needs with confidence before God our Father. That the unity which comes from Christ, the true vine, may draw all Christians to his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That priests, religious, and missionaries may be committed to their vocation in the church and remain united with Christ in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those tried by life's difficulties may be faithful to Christ and his gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may see Christ as a source of strength and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may remain in Christ forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of this Mass, for... The repose of the soul of Mildred Gilda Moneco. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, without you we can do nothing. Hear our prayers and keep us in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul, Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. 
And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Yes, I'll worship your holy name. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by our worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory. I stay acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sent, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to all the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Terence and Marcel our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer, sorry, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with you. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, O Lord. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, O Lord. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with you. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I have got in contact with Father Mark uh, last Monday uh, and greeted him on his uh, anniversary on his, uh, for his ordination. And uh, he asked me, is the church still standing? And I, I told him, the church burnt down because we've been asking of uh, fire from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, no, no, I'm just kidding. And uh, so, um, yeah, he just wants to relay the message to all of you that he, he appreciates all the greetings that, uh, that you have given me, him uh, on, on his ordination uh, day. So, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And the Father will dance as on a day of joy. He will exalt over you and renew you by his love. And the Father will dance as on a day of joy. He will exalt over you and renew you by his love. He will renew you by His love.